Hindi. Dan, so the deeper the fossils are found, the older they are? You've got it! And sometimes, large amounts of plants are deposited in sedimentary rocks. If they are compressed under a lot of pressure, for a long period of time, they turn into carbon. This gives us coal, oil, natural gas, and petroleum. I guess that's why they're called fossil fuels. You bet it is. And let me tell you, fossil fuels are really a gas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. OK, sedimentary rocks make up about 3 quarters of the rocks at Earth's surface. You got it. What about the rest of the rocks? What are they? Glad you asked. There are two other kinds of rocks, igneous and metamorphic. Igneous rocks form when molten rock cools and becomes solid. 
Molten rock is called magma when it is below the Earth's surface. But sometimes magma pushes up through cracks to the surface of the Earth. Then it is called lava. Oh, I just love a, a good eruption. <laughs> Stop that. When lava cools, it becomes a kind of igneous rock called volcanic rock. Basalt is the most common type of volcanic rock. Most of the rocks on the ocean floor are basalt. Igneous rock can also form when magma cools slowly and becomes hard while it's deep underground. Rocks that form this way, like granite, usually have large crystals. Fossils are not usually found in igneous rocks. The heat of a volcanic eruption tends to destroy living things and only rarely preserves any evidence of them. However, fossils may be found in volcanic ash deposits, which are actually a kind of sedimentary rock. That makes sense. Sedimentary rocks are made from sediment, and igneous rocks are made when molten rock is cooled. But what about metamorphic rocks? How do they form? Good question, kiddo. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that have morphed or changed from one kind of rock into another. Metamorphic rocks were once igneous or sedimentary rocks, but movement of the Earth's crust caused them to change. Just moving the rocks changes them? No. Try pushing your hands together very hard. <clears throat> Do you feel heat and pressure? Yeah. <sighs> when the Earth's crust moves, igneous or sedimentary rocks get squeezed by tremendous pressure, which heats the rocks and pulls them like taffy. The original rock is changed by this heating and pulling, and it becomes a metamorphic rock. As you might guess, any fossils that were in the sedimentary rock will now be in the metamorphic rock. But those fossils may be stretched and deformed because of the heating and pulling. Bummer. Metamorphic rocks are the least common of the three kinds of rocks. Slate and marble are two examples. Wow, that really rocks! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what's this? A rock concert? As a matter of fact, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all the way from Little Rock, Arkansas, the Pet Rocks! two rocks may be formed the same way, they can be made up of different kinds of minerals. That's right! To identify the minerals in rocks, scientists use properties like color, luster, hardness, and streak. Look at these! I wonder what minerals they are. Hey, if I describe their properties, that might help me to identify them. Bravo! Now, the color of a mineral is the first thing people tend to notice. But be careful! Most minerals can occur in more than one color. Luster describes how light is reflected from the surface of a mineral. The two main types of luster are metallic and non-metallic. The hardness of a mineral is its ability to resist scratching. The Mohs Hardness Scale uses 10 minerals to rank hardness. Take a look here. A diamond is the hardest naturally occurring substance, with a hardness of 10. And talc is very soft, so it only has a hardness of 1. 
That's all good and fine, but how can I find out the hardness of the minerals in this box? With a little scratching. Not that kind of scratching. We'll use minerals and objects from the Mohs scale. If your mineral sample can scratch an object, say this penny, then it has a higher hardness. Let's try this one. Ooh, good choice. I like the nice metallic luster. Can it scratch a penny? Looks like it does, Marco. That means this mineral has a hardness higher than three. That's the way to do it. Now try scratching this quartz. Nope. And look, the quartz will scratch my mineral sample. So it has a hardness between three and seven. We could keep on scratching away with different materials on the scale to narrow it down even more. But I think you get the idea. I sure do. Thanks, Tara. Another way to categorize minerals with a hardness lower than seven is to determine their streak. Streak? Does that mean some of them have racing stripes? <laughs> nah. The streak of a mineral is the color of the powder it leaves when you scrape it across a streak plate. We know your mineral has a hardness lower than seven, so... Red? That's not what I would have guessed at all! Don't feel too bad, kid. Science is full of surprises. Have a look at this table here. Do any of those descriptions match your mineral? Let me see. Steel gray. Hardness 5.5 to 6.5. Rust red streak. Metallic luster. I'll bet this is hematite. That's the way to do it. Great job. Well, kid, your earth science knowledge is really building up. Ano mang business, malaki o munti, ay puno ng gamit na sari-sari. At di problema kung saan magpadala, basta ninja van ka yan. Nasa grab siya, mura ang padala, hindi lang Manila. It looks like something else is building up under my chair. Hey, that sort of looks like a volcano! I guess it was a volcano. And just look where it brought us. Ah, the Topographic Learning Center. This is the perfect place to learn about how the surface of the Earth changes. Seems like a volcano would be pretty good at changing the surface. Tell me about it, kid. These aren't pimples, you know. I had a friend do a science fair project on volcanoes. She told me there are several types. She told you right. There are shield volcanoes, cinder cones, stratovolcanoes, and more. That's a lot of volcanoes. So what's the difference between the types? Shield volcanoes are built by layer upon layer of lava. Their eruptions travel great distances from a central vent or group of vents, so they have broad, flat, rounded shapes. They kind of look like a shield lying on the ground. That's a great way to remember the name. But while they may look flat from above, they can still get pretty tall. Mauna Loa is the largest shield volcano. Mauna Loa means long mountain but it stands over 13,000 feet above sea level. And it rises over 28,000 feet from the ocean floor. It would be the world's tallest mountain if it weren't mostly underwater. Maui wowie! Actually, it's on the big island of Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> The eruptions of shield volcanoes usually don't have much ash, and they are fairly safe for scientists to monitor. But some other kinds of volcanoes can throw hot ash and cinders into the air. These can form a pyroclastic flow, which travels very fast and burns almost everything in its path. 
That's the truth. The temperature of a pyroclastic flow can reach over 500 degrees Celsius. Whoa! What kind of volcano can do that? Stratovolcanoes can. They are quite beautiful, like yours truly. But they tend to be tall and symmetric with steep sides. A few stratovolcanoes that you might have heard of are Mount Fuji in Japan, and in the USA, you'll find Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier in Washington State and Mount Hood in Oregon. Not Oregon, Oregon. Those stratovolcanoes really are beautiful. What about cinder cones? Ah, the little guys. You can often find cinder cones on the flanks of shield volcanoes and stratovolcanoes. When a cinder cone volcano erupts, cinders of lava are blown into the air and fall around the opening of the volcano. The pile of cinders forms a small oval-shaped volcano that can grow to about 1,000 feet, but some are much smaller. Many cinder cone volcanoes have a bowl-shaped crater at the opening. Hey, Marco! What causes volcanoes in the first place? To explain that, let's dig a little deeper. Deeper into the Earth, that is. Earth is divided into four layers. The solid inner core, the liquid outer core, and the mantle. That's the thickest layer. And last, <laughs> and least, is the crust. <laughs> least, because it's the thinnest layer. The rocky outer crust is made of plates that fit together sort of like puzzle pieces. These plates move a little bit each year as they slide on top of a weak layer of the mantle. This hotter, deeper layer of the mantle can be pushed and pulled like putty. The whole process is called plate tectonics. The edges of the Earth's plates touch each other. As they move, the plates may just slide past each other. But the plates can also spread apart or even crash together. Sometimes when two plates collide, large mountain ranges such as the Himalayas are formed. That happens if the two plates have the same density, so they fold as they move together, much like two kitchen rugs pushed together. That explains mountains, but I wanted to know how volcanoes are formed. Hold your horses, kid. <laughs> if colliding plates have different densities, one plate can be forced back down into the deeper regions of the Earth. That plate can begin to melt when it reaches a depth which is hot enough. The molten crust rises back towards the surface where it helps make volcanoes and islands. Whew, that's a long process. Is that how all volcanoes are formed? Well, no. Here's another way. As the plates move, hot spots under the crust may find weak places in the plates or between two plates that are moving apart. This will allow magma to come to the surface from deep within the Earth. The result is a volcanic eruption, which can add new landmass to existing land or even form new islands. Okay, let me get this straight. Volcanoes can form where the plates are pushing together, where they're pulling apart, or anywhere the Earth's crust is weak. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And the Earth's crust, too. <laughs> <laughs> I cracked myself up. Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, Marco. Now that you have an idea of how Earth's surface can be built up, let's talk about how it can be worn down. Weathering is the process that causes rocks to crack and fragment. Since rocks form in different ways and are made up of different minerals, they react differently when exposed to temperature changes, moisture, particles in the air, or pressure changes. I suppose that means there are different kinds of weathering. That's right, Kevin. One thing that causes weathering is frost. When water freezes, it has an unusual property. Unlike most materials that contract when they are cooled, 
Water expands when it solidifies into ice. This can put incredible pressure on rocks. Water gets into the pores or cracks of the rocks and then freezes. So when the water freezes, it expands and causes pieces of the rock to break off. Right. Another kind of weathering is abrasion. That can happen when rocks rub against each other, like when a rock rolls downhill or when it tumbles in rivers. Wind can cause abrasion too. Wind sometimes carries dirt or sand that can wear down rocks as it blows against them. Plants like moss and lichen can wedge their way into pores, crevices. Oh, good afternoon. Antayin lang natin, anak maa. Ay, may uh, ano si Ma'am Joan po. Wait lang po. Good afternoon for teacher. Afternoon. Teacher, hindi pa ko kami nakakain. Pati po kami, hindi pa po kami nakakain. Luluto pa lang. Ay, bakit? <laughs> Luluto pa lang din. Ay, okay lang. Kung ano, di kumain muna kayo. Habang inaantay si ano, yung ipapa. Teacher, mamaya pa po maka maluluto po yung mamaya pa Ay. lang po. Ay. Mamaya. Malapit na sa akin, teacher. Mama Lu? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, gawin mo po akong co-host para makapag-share screen po ako. Ma'am, naka-co-host ata lahat tayo, ma'am. Ay, naka-co-host po ba? <laughs> ah, sige po. I-try ko po. Ah, sige po. Thank you po. Okay. Gross. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun because the brain is an amazing, amazing part of your body. And you're going to understand it after watching this video. I know we're going to jump right in. It's going to be so cool. So what is a brain? I mean, here in this drawing, it almost looks like it's like bubble gum. What is a brain? Well, the brain is an organ of the body. Isn't that interesting? It's an organ of the body. All right, so what is an organ? <laughs> we have to know that to know what a brain is. If the brain is an organ of the body, what is an organ? 
It's interesting, an organ is a special group of tissues that do specific jobs for your body. Like your heart. Your heart is a special group of tissues that does a specific job for your body. An eyeball is an organ too. It's a special group of tissues that does a specific job for your body. And how about a kidney? A kidney is an organ that's a special group of tissues that does a specific job for your body. See, the brain isn't like just some wad of gums. The brain is a special group of tissues. And not only that, Remember, an organ is a special group of tissues that do specific jobs for your body. They do different jobs. They have tasks to do. So we know there are special tasks that the brain has to do, but what does the brain do? What is it that the brain does? Well, this might sound crazy. Okay, this might, I hope you're sitting down, this might sound a little crazy. The brain controls most of the activities of the body. Your brain is like the control center of your body. When you sit down, your brain told your body to sit down. When you stand up, your brain told your body to stand up. It's amazing. Your brain controls most of the activities of your body. Wait, what? what's with this sad music? I mean, this is not a sad thing. The brain controls most of the activities of the body, but that's a... That's a good thing. Who's playing this sad music right now? Seriously? Kittens? Two kittens playing the piano. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? They're cute, but come on, all right? Tell them, to, if they're going to play piano, tell them to play the right kind of music. Okay, it's not much to ask. Tell them to play the right kind of music. All right, that's better. So the brain controls most of the activities of the body, and that's a really good thing. You see, the brain is really powerful. Oh my goodness. The brain is really, 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 really powerful. It does a great job of controlling the activities of your body. Your brain is a champ. It's like the control center of your body, and your brain does a phenomenal job. Who's ready to hatch some cool pets? Click here to make your very own... Wait, but how does something that almost looks like a wad of bubble gum control most of the activities of your body? How does that even work? Well, your brain uses something called the nervous system. Yeah, the nervous system. It's different than this kind of nervous. This man, his team is behind, okay? It's near the end of the game. He doesn't know if they're going to be able to win. And he's sitting there wearing his cape. He's nervous. This is a different type of nervous. The nervous system is how the brain is able to control the actions of your body. And here's how it works. Here is where your brain is. And here is where something called the spinal cord is. Now the brain and the spinal cord work together to send information called signals. These signals are sent to what are called your nerves. Your nerves enable your body to do what your brain directed, and that is how the brain is able to control most of the actions of your body. The brain and spinal cord make up what's called the central nervous system, where information is processed and sent out as signals. 
And those nerves that go throughout your whole body, those are called the peripheral nervous system. And these arrows are just pointing to just a few that are in the arm, but they go all over the place and they receive these signals from the brain. How cool is that? From the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, the peripheral nervous system gets the signals and is like, okay, let's do this. And what's so cool, it can work the other way around where the nerves can actually send signals to the spinal cord and to the brain. Let's say you're playing outside and you fall and you hurt your knee. Your nerves, which are part of the peripheral nervous system, send out a signal and say, uh-oh, uh-oh, pain, I'm hurt, I'm hurt in the knee. That signal gets sent to the brain and spinal cord, which are the central nervous system, and your brain processes that information so you can take the action that you need to take, which is to take care of your knee. Hey, did you know the brain, because it controls most of the activities of your body, needs to be protected? That is why it's so amazing that your brain lives here, in something called the skull. Your brain lives in the skull. Your skull is really hard and protects your brain because your brain controls most of the activities of your body. But not only that... Hey, Mom. The brain is also responsible for all of your thinking and dreaming and imagining. Have you ever sat down and just thought and planned? All of that is using your brain. How incredible! So good that your brain lives in your skull so it can be protected because not only does it control most of the activities of your body, but also you do your thinking with your brain, your imagining with your brain, even your dreaming with your brain. How incredible is the human brain? What a secret. You were using your brain the whole time you were watching this video as you were learning. You're using your brain. How cool is that? We love the brain. The brain is so, so awesome. Hey, Petey. I know, I know, I heard about your plane. You know, it's a cool plane, you know, and and it's it's neat. I, I don't know if it flies or you you look pretty confident that it's going to fly, which is cool. Yeah, I, I see you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, thanks for waving. Thanks for saying hello. You know, we're actually in the middle of learning. We're, we're in the middle of learning a lot of new cool things right now. So I actually do have to go. Hi, you're still waving. Okay. Um, we're gonna go, uh, because now we need to learn about reptiles. This is amazing. This is awesome. You know, the world has many different types of animals. One of the most fascinating types are the reptiles, and you're about to see why. But first, let's meet some of these reptiles. Snakes. Turtles, crocodiles, geckos, lizards, and chameleons. Now look at these incredible animals. They're all reptiles. What do they all have in common? We're about to find out what makes all these animals reptiles. First of all, they are covered with scales. Not with hair or feathers, but with scales. Look at this incredible iguana. Oh my goodness, covered in scales. I mean, just look at these scales. These scales are dry and they're waterproof. And they cover the bodies of reptiles just like this iguana. Reptiles aren't covered in fur, they're not covered in hair, they're not covered in feathers, they're covered in these waterproof scales. Look at this massive snake. You can see that the snake is covered with scales. Remember, snakes 
are reptiles. And reptiles are covered with scales. Look at all these scales. Absolutely covered with these intricate scales. Here's an interesting example of scales. This is an albino alligator, which means the alligator is very pale. And you can see that this alligator is covered with scales, but the alligator also has these bony plates on his back. You can kind of see them there in the corner. Those are not scales, but reptiles also can have those bony plates, but this alligator is still covered with scales. Scales are a big clue that an animal is a reptile. The second thing you need to know about reptiles is reptiles breathe in oxygen. Just like we breathe in oxygen, reptiles have to breathe in oxygen to survive. Now, just like people, reptiles have two lungs in their body. Lungs bring in new air and pump out the old air. Even reptiles that live in and near water, like crocodiles and alligators, have to breathe in air to survive. Now this is so fascinating. Did you know reptiles are cold-blooded? Cold-blooded means that their bodies don't keep them warm automatically. They have to have sunlight to keep them warm. Here's a picture of a lizard that's soaking in some sunlight. This is very important for this lizard because, as with all the other reptiles, this lizard is cold-blooded. That means that the temperature of the lizard needs to have sunlight to keep it warm. It doesn't warm automatically. This lizard is cold-blooded. Here's a snake that's in the sunlight. The sunlight is helping to warm the body of this snake. This doesn't happen automatically with the snake's body because the snake is cold-blooded just like the other reptiles. Hey, here's a picture of a chameleon. Chameleons are just so cool. Now, of course, this chameleon is cold-blooded because all of the reptiles are cold-blooded. If they want to get warmer, they have to go to the sunlight because their bodies don't warm them. They're cold-blooded. Wow, I mean, right? I mean, these are incredible creatures. You know, reptiles, they're covered in these dry, waterproof scales. They breathe in oxygen with those two lungs like we do. They're cold-blooded, which is so fascinating. Can you imagine having to lay out in the sun if you wanted to warm your body instead of your body being able to do it on its own? These are fascinating creatures. Hey, d do you have a favorite reptile? It's okay, you don't have to tell me. But... Cool. Very cool. Yeah, it's, you know, you figure snakes, turtles, crocodiles, alligators, geckos, lizards, chameleons. I mean, reptiles are just the coolest, aren't they? I mean, they're, ju they're just absolutely amazing. Writing's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct. Hey, when is it going to be my turn? I want to be in this compilation video too. Okay, let's see. I'm going to teach about pollination. Hi, look at all these beautiful flowers that I've found. Let's look at some more. These flowers are so pretty. Look at how bluey, purpley they are. They're just so beautiful. And these ones are so red and... Achoo! Oh, excuse me. These ones are so red and brilliant. Achoo! And look at all the pretty colors. Achoo! It's so... Achoo! It's so beautiful. I love these flowers, but... All the pollen is making me sneeze and sniffly, so I think we should go back inside. Alright, that's better. Well, flowers, they make pollen, and pollen is a fine powder. It's usually yellow, and it can make you sneeze, just like me earlier. 
Flowers use pollen to make seeds through a process called pollination. Okay, do you see these yellow feathery parts of the flower? This is yes. the male part of the flower yes. called the stamen, and that is where the pollen is. Now this middle pink part of the flower is called the pistil, which is the female part of the flower. This is where the pollen needs to go so the flower can make seeds. Looking at this flower, do you think the yellow parts are the stamen or the pistil? That's right, that's the stamen. The stamen is the male part of the flower. That's the part that makes pollen. Now here's a different flower. Do you think this purple part in the middle is the stamen or the pistil? Very good, that's the pistil. The pistil is the female part of the flower where the pollen needs to go so that the flower can make seeds. When pollen is moved from the stamen to the pistil, it is called pollination. There are flowers that have both a stamen and a pistil, but there are some flowers that have only a pistil, and there are other flowers that have only a stamen. Pollen can't move by itself, so how will it get to the pistil? With the help of pollinators. Do you recognize this well-loved pollinator? Very good, that's a honeybee. Honeybees are pollinators, and you can see the yellowy-orange pollen on his leg right here. Pollinators are pollen helpers. By moving the pollen to the pistil, the flower can make seeds. Let's look at some other pollinators. Do you know what this pollinator is called? That's right, this is a butterfly. And this one is called a painted lady butterfly. Butterflies are pollinators. What kind of animal is this? That's right, that's a bat. This is a flying fox, which is a fruit bat. And fruit bats are pollinators too. What's this little guy called? Great job, this is a hummingbird. It's a ruby-throated hummingbird. And hummingbirds are also pollinators. Other pollinators include wasps and moths. Ants and beetles, like this ladybug, are pollinators too. These other pollinators are very well known. They are bumblebees and honeybees. All right, let's review what we've learned today. What is the fine yellow powder on this bee called? That's right, it's pollen. Pollen is a fine yellow powder. This yellow part of the flower makes pollen. Do you remember what it's called? That's right, that's the stamen. The stamen is the male part of the, the flower. That's the part that makes pollen. Why do flowers use pollen? Great job! Flowers use pollen to make seeds. This purple part of the flower is where the pollen needs to go so the flower can make seeds. Do you remember what it's called? Very good, that's the pistil. The pistil is the female part of the flower where the pollen needs to go so that the flower can make seeds. What is the process called when pollen is moved from the stamen to the pistil? Great job! When pollen is moved from the stamen to the pistil, it is called pollination. What is the name of the pollen helpers who move the pollen so the flower can make seeds? That's right, they're called pollinators. Pollinators are pollen helpers. By moving the pollen to the pistil so the flower can make seeds. 
Now you know how the flowers around you make more flowers. Pollinators help them through a process called pollination so they can make seeds. Okay, okay. I'm going to call now. You have been doing a great job, just like Mike, who's doing these push-ups. You know, he knows it's important to stay fit and to exercise and to stay healthy. And you're, like, exercising your mind right now, which is super cool. And next, we are going to learn about earthquakes. And the first thing we need to understand is the Earth has an outer shell. Isn't that interesting? This outer shell is called the crust. Crust, you know, like you know, like bread crust. And I, I hope you enjoy bread crust, by the way, because you can't eat the crust of the earth. But I hope that you're eating the bread crust. You know, it's still yummy. It's on the outside. In fact, it's really healthy. It's really great. Okay, let's get back to the crust of the earth. You know, you don't eat the earth's crust, but hopefully you eat this kind of crust. Okay. The surface of the earth is part of this outer shell. Remember, the outer shell is called the crust. This means that hills, mountains, and valleys are all part of the earth's crust. That means even the floor of the ocean is part of the Earth's crust. <laughs> Woohoo! So, what is the outer shell of the Earth? Yeah, the crust. And you know, it's fascinating. The crust has lots of pieces and is almost like a jigsaw puzzle. And you might not realize this, but these pieces of crust are always moving. In fact, they're moving right now. The pieces of crust that are below you right now are moving. They're always moving. Now, usually the crust moves slowly. It doesn't move very fast. When the crust moves slowly, you don't feel it. The pieces are moving beneath you, but you don't even know because they're moving very, very slowly. You can't even feel it. Sometimes, however, the pieces of crust can move really fast. They can move quickly. When the pieces of crust are moving quickly, an earthquake can happen. So, what's so when the pieces of crust move slowly, you don't feel it. But when the pieces of crust move quickly, you could have an earthquake. Earthquakes begin under Earth's surface and shake the ground. Here's a picture of something that can happen when there's an earthquake. Do you see the massive cracks in the ground? This is from an earthquake. The earthquake began under the Earth's surface. It shook the ground and it caused this crack. Oh my goodness, look at this picture that shows damage from an earthquake. See, earthquakes can also break down buildings, bridges, and roads. They don't just cause cracks in the ground, they break all kinds of things around us. Earthquakes are so powerful, they can change Earth's surface. Well, you may be wondering, where do earthquakes start? Earthquakes start underground at a place called the Focus. You can see it here on the picture. Now, that's a weird name for it, I know. It's called a Focus. We don't know why, but that's just the way it is. It's called the Focus. It's where the earthquake starts. The earthquake is the strongest at the spot above the focus called the epicenter. You can see from the picture it's directly above. When an earthquake happens, you don't want to be anywhere near the epicenter. While earthquakes are very powerful, they don't last that long. In fact, most earthquakes last less than a minute. And remember, a minute is 60 seconds. It's not too long. And did you know this earthquake fact? 
earthquakes get scored by how strong they are. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Earthquakes get their own score, their own number. Scientists use seismographs to measure and score earthquakes. The bigger the number, the stronger the earthquake. So here are some common earthquake scores. A 1 or a 2 earthquake, you barely feel it. The 3 to 6 range of earthquakes, there are going to be some damage. But 7 plus any number that's 7 or higher for an earthquake score, that's a massive earthquake and there's going to be tons of damage. Remember, the Earth has an outer shell, and this outer shell is called the crust. The crust has lots of pieces, and it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle, and all the pieces are always moving. But if they move too fast, that can cause an earthquake, and an earthquake changes the Earth's surface and can damage roads, bridges, buildings, and even crack up the Earth. And remember, the earthquake is the strongest at the spot above the focus called the epicenter. You don't want to be anywhere near the epicenter if an earthquake was to happen. Thanks for learning about earthquakes with us, a powerful way that Earth's surface changes. Oh, this is such a heavy cart. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, it's hard work. You know, a lot of times learning can be hard work, too. But we hope that these videos are really helpful and make learning fun so that learning isn't hard like pushing this cart. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, what's the next thing we should learn about? Let's learn about the plant parts and their functions. Okay, so plants have six parts. All right, so how many plant parts are there? <laughs> yeah, six. There are six plant parts. The first three help plants get water, make food, and grow. They are roots, stems, and leaves. The second three help plants grow new plants. They are flowers, fruit, and seeds. So let's learn the plant parts one by one. First, the parts that help the plant get water, make food, and grow. Okay, so the plants we're going to look at today are the roots. Roots have a special job. You see, roots hold the plant in the soil. The soil is the dirt in the ground. Then, roots bring water and nutrients from the soil to the plant. Roots are usually underground, but can be above ground, too. Have you ever seen a tree that looks like this, where the roots are above ground? Remember, the roots hold the plant to the soil. Okay, so now we're going to look at the second part of a plant, which are the stems. Now the stems hold the plant up above ground. The stems carry water and food through the plant.
stems are the delivery system of the plant. Roots get water and nutrients from the soil, and the stems carry the water and nutrients throughout the plant. Remember, the stem holds the plant above ground. The next part of the plant we're going to learn today are leaves. The leaves are on the end of the stems of plants. And this is interesting. Leaves are where plants make most of their food. Leaves take in air, and they use air, water, and sunlight to make food. Remember, leaves are on the end of the stems. Okay, so next, the parts that help the plant make new plants. The next part we're going to look at are flowers. Flowers, like leaves, grow on the end of the stems. Flowers are often the most colorful part of the plant. Okay, now this is awesome. The rich colors of flowers help attract pollinators. That's why they're beautiful. The beauty has a purpose. After getting pollinated, flowers can make seeds and fruit. Do you love fruit? Yes, fruit is awesome. You have flowers to thank for that. Flowers make fruit. So the next time you're eating an amazing piece of fruit, just think to yourself, oh, thank you, flowers. Thank you, flowers. Remember, flowers are the colorful growths on the stems. The next part of the plant we're going to learn about is the fruit. All right, now where on the plant is the fruit? Fruit hangs on the end of stems. Now, you might be wondering, what's the fruit's job? What does the fruit do? Well, the fruit's job is to hold the seeds. The fruit is just a delicious seed holder. Now, either one of two things happens to fruit. Fruit is either picked and eaten, or it falls off the plant and rots. Remember, fruit is the tasty stuff on the stems. Okay, the last part of the plant that we're going to learn today are the seeds. So where are the seeds of the plant? Seeds hide inside of the fruit. Now the seeds have an incredible job. You see, seeds grow into new plants. Okay, you might be wondering, well, how does that work? Well, here's one way. When animals eat fruit, they eat the seeds. Later, the seeds leave the animal through its waste wherever the animal is. This is called dispersal. Or, fruit falls from the tree and rots. The word rots means dies. The fruit dies. It rots. The seeds fall out and can make a new plant. The first way, called dispersal, takes the seed to another place so it plants a new plant in a new place. When a fruit falls and rots, it plants a new plant nearby the original plant. Remember, seeds live inside of the fruit. 
Hey, it looked like you were doing a good job paying attention, learning about the plant parts. And now we want to see how much you learn. We're going to play a game called Name the Plant Part. We're going to show you a plant part, and then you go ahead and tell us which plant part it is. All right, hope you're ready, because here we go. Look at this picture of a plant. Which plant part is colored in? Uh-huh. The fruit. The fruit of this plant. Great job. Here's the next one. What plant part is colored in? Yeah, the leaves. The leaves are colored in. Great job. All right, it's time for this one. It's colored brown. Which plant part is this? Uh-huh. The roots. Awesome. Okay, let's try this one. What part of the plant is colored in? You see it there on the bottom? What is that? Yeah, what part is that? Yes! The seeds! Let's try this one. Look at the picture. Could you name the plant part? Which plant part is that? You can see it's outlined in color. Yeah, the flowers! Awesome job! Who's ready to hatch some cool pets? Click here to make your big. Hey, whoa, okay, first of all, elephants don't drive, okay? Elephants can't get a driver's license, and he's driving on the grass! He's driving on the grass! You're gonna ruin the lawn, okay? What's going on here? Alright, this is out of hand. Okay, <sighs> elephant, I don't want to tell you what you can do and what you can't do, but you can't drive, alright? Oh, my goodness. Alright, next we are going to learn about the human heart, the different parts of your heart, how it works, how it functions. We're going to have such a great time. Okay, well, let's start here. What is the heart? That's a great question. What is the heart? Well, the heart is an organ of your body. Yeah, that's right. The heart is an organ of your body. Okay, so what is an organ? Yeah, we have to know that to know what a heart is. If the heart is an organ of the body, what is an organ? It's interesting. An organ is a special group of tissues that do specific jobs for your body. Like your brain. Your brain is an organ. It's a special group of tissues that does a specific job for your body. An eyeball is an organ too. It's a special group of tissues that does a specific job for your body. And how about a kidney? A kidney is an organ that's a special group of tissues that does a specific job for your body. So we know the heart is a special group of tissues, don't we? Because it's an organ, and an organ is a special group of tissues. But that's not all. Remember, an organ is a special group of tissues that do specific jobs for your body. They do different jobs. They have tasks to do. So, what does the heart do? Well, we can see it's moving, isn't it? The heart is constantly moving. Wow! 
So what does the heart do for your body? That is a really good question. Why am I asking you that question? Why am I not just telling you the answer? <laughs> All right, let's tell you. Well, here it is. The heart pumps blood through the body. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? The heart pumps blood through the body. Your heart is a big pump. And it's pumping blood through your body as you're watching this video right now. You're watching Homeschool Pop. You're having a great time. And even right now, your heart is pumping blood through your body. Isn't that incredible? So how does your heart do that? And why am I in a grocery store? <laughs> I guess I'm hungry for fish again. So the heart has four chambers. Four chambers. If anyone ever asks you, how many chambers does your heart have? You'll say, my heart has four chambers. That word chamber almost means like a room. It's almost like your heart has four rooms. It has four chambers. There's the right atrium, and there's the left atrium. These are the top chambers of your heart. Then the lower two chambers are the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Pretty simple. The heart has four chambers. Two on the top, two on the bottom. So here is how the heart pumps blood through the body. The blood comes in through these valves right here into the right atrium and the left atrium. Do you see those arrows? The blood flows in. Then the blood goes into the ventricles, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Isn't that pretty cool? Then the blood leaves the ventricles through these valves up here, and it's ready to replenish the body with the oxygen and nutrients that your body needs. This is all made possible because the heart is a muscular organ, meaning it has lots of muscles. Those muscles are what enables it to pump blood through your body. Isn't that cool? It's such a strong organ. The heart pumps blood to every part of your body through the veins and arteries. This is called the circulatory system. Isn't that amazing? It enables your entire body to get the oxygen and nutrients that it needs so you can be healthy and strong. The heart, what an amazing organ that pumps blood through your body so you can stay strong and healthy. Here's our friend Fred. We heard that he just took up the harp. He just started playing the harp. Fred, we can't we can't hear you. We're having audio problems with Fred right now. Fred, you look so happy playing. We we can't hear you, okay? You got you got to wear your mic or something. We can't hear the music. Oh, he doesn't even know. He doesn't even, isn't that nice? You know, Fred is just plucking away. He's having a good time. You know, kind of like we're having a good time right now with these learning videos. And next, we are going to learn about the planets of the solar system. Now, as we begin, we have to answer this question. What are planets? Huh, this is a really good question. What are planets? Planets are round objects that orbit the sun. Here is a picture of the sun. It's the largest star in our solar system. It's massive. And you can see there's a ring around it. Those are some solar flares, fire shooting out of the sun. Absolutely amazing and stunning. And it kind of looks like a pizza, actually. It kind of gets me hungry. I don't know. Doesn't it look like a cheese pizza? Oh, it's really yummy. The word orbit means to circle around. That means planets are round objects that circle around the sun. Hey, what 3D shape is a planet? Think about it. What 3D shape is a planet? We know that a planet is round. What 3D shape is perfectly round? Yeah, a sphere. 
Yeah, planets are spheres. They're perfectly round. Yeah, good job. To summarize, planets are spheres that go around the sun. Pretty simple, huh? Hey, did you know there are two types of planets? Yeah, it's really interesting. There are two types of planets. Okay, so there are primary planets and there are dwarf planets. Those are the two types of planets. Now there are eight primary planets. These are the main planets that you think of, the main planets that are circling around the sun, and these are the planets we're going to be studying in this video. And then there are five dwarf planets. These planets are a lot smaller and are not considered primary planets. <laughs> Sorry, Pluto. Wow, there they are, the primary planets. You're going to get to know all eight of these primary planets. You're going to know them so well. Oh my goodness, this is going to be awesome. The first planet is Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. The second planet is Venus. Pretty cool, huh? The second planet is Venus. Our planet, Earth, is the third planet from the sun. The fourth planet is Mars. Mars is the fourth planet. The fifth planet is Jupiter. That's the biggest planet of them all. The sixth planet is Saturn. You gotta love those rings. Saturn is the sixth planet. Uranus is the seventh planet. And the eighth planet is Neptune. Neptune is the furthest primary planet from the Sun. Let's look at each of the eight primary planets. The first planet is Mercury. Hello?
Good afternoon. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon everyone. Okay, ready na ba tayo, mga bata? Apo! Good afternoon to each and everyone. Welcome to our most awaited part of our math high culminating activity, our awarding of winners. So, ready na ba kayo? Excited na ba kayo, mga bata? Apo! Okay, sige. So, before we announce the winners of the different category, May I remind everyone to please keep muted so that you can clearly hear who are the winners in the different presentations or category. Okay, so mag-mute muna tayo mga bata. Ayan, very good. Teacher, my blade, blade taco. Oo, sige anak, sige. Mag-mute muna tayo, okay po? And... Um, may we also have this chance to thank everyone, especially our learners, participants, parents, supporters, and others who gave their support in making this activity successful. But before that, may I, uh, let's have attendance check first. Okay, so um, nandito ba yung mga grade 1 ko? Patingin oh, wow. yung mga grade 1. Okay, mga grade 1, mag-clap muna tayo ng 10 times. 10 times. Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay. O, nandito ba yung mga grade 2? So, mga grade 2. Uh -huh. Okay, shake your hands up and down nga. Go. Shake your hands up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, and down. How about grade 3? Nandito ba yung mga grade 3? Opo! Okay. Stand Opo. up and jump 10 times. Stand up and jump 10 times. Go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9 and 10. How about grade 4? Nandito ba yung mga grade 4? Teacher, hindi ako nakatumalong sa akin. Ah, nandito ba yung mga grade 4? Grade 4, yes. Opo. 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 Raise nga ng hand ang mga grade 4. Ayan. Grade 5. Nandito ba ang mga grade 5? Patingin kung marami ang mga grade 5. Ayan, mag-stamp na ng feet uh, 10 times. Stamp feet. Stamp your feet 10 times. Come on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. How about grade 6? Nandito ba? Patingin nga kung ilan ang mga grade 6. Ayan, pakisabi nga. You see, you see siya na ko. Everybody, uh, grade 6. Uh, you see siya na ko. You see siya na ko. You see siya na ko. Lahat ng grade 6. You see siya na ko. You see siya na ko. Hey, very good. So, pwede na tayong mag- Karang kakang nakalimutan, Ma'am Shi. Para naman ano? lang na sa mga pre-school card Ay, ako pala. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Nandito okay. rin siya. Nandito yung mga preschool ni Ma'am Franz. Nandito ba? Kinder 1 and Kinder 2. Oh, Sinigaw na ang FF Ray. Nasa na mga Kinder 2? Ayan. FF Ray. FF Ray. Sorry, nakalimutan ko yung preschool. <laughs> Sorry po. Okay, sige. So, um, pwede na tayong mag-start. Teacher Franz. Start. This is the third part of our math science preparation. It's the awarding of 
winners for the different categories. We have poem recitation, declamation, recycled costume, poster making, and the winners of the quiz B. So give me a two thumbs up, kids. Kung ready na po bang mag-start at mapanood ang mga winners ng ating different categories. Yeah, I will now share my screen. And let's have the award. Okay, kapag um, nakita po yung pangalan, pumalakpak, pati po yung mga classmates. Ayan, pumalakpak po. Palakpakan natin ng mga classmates na nanal for the different categories. Okay na. Sige, Ma'am Joanne, the floor is yours. Okay. So now, we are pleased to announce our winners in the different categories. Okay. Next, please. Our artists of... Okay, yeah. Okay. So first, let's have the winners in the Matsai poem recitation. Okay. Third place, sir. Numbers, numbers. Uriel Yancy B. Corpus. Numbers tell how old I am and how many people in my farm, how much I weigh and guess how tall where I live. Even that's not all. Numbers are a part of me. Money, time, and history. When to wake up and when to eat. What size shoes to buy for my feet. How, how money something costs. A number to call if my dog gets lost. I don't know. Where I would be if numbers weren't a part of me. Okay, second place winner, Mara Micaela M. Pablo. Math about me by Melissa Machan. Numbers, numbers all around. Everywhere they can be found. Numbers tell how old I am and how many people in my farm. How much I weigh and just how tall. Where I live and that's not all. Numbers are a part of me. Money, time and history. When to wake up and when to eat. What size shoes to buy for my feet. How much money something cost? A number to call if my dog gets lost. I don't know where I would be if numbers weren't a part of me.
And our first placer is Darren Carl S. Abuan. Math about me. Numbers. Numbers all around. Everywhere they can be found. Numbers tell how old I am and how many people in my family. How much I weigh and just how tall. Where I live and that's not all. Numbers are part of me. Money, time, and history. When to wake up and when to eat. What size shoes to buy for my feet. How much money something costs. A number to call my dog gets lost. I don't know where I would be if numbers weren't a part of me. Once again, I'm Darren Carlson, the son of one. Now let's go to our second category, Matsai Declamation. Third placer goes to Aidan Vale G. Vasai. In the end, we destroyed the heaven that was called Earth. The Earth had been beautiful until our spirit moved over it and destroyed all things. And we said that there be darkness. And there was darkness. And we liked the darkness. So we called the darkness security. And we divided ourselves into races and religions and classes of society. And there was no morning and no evening on the seventh day before the end. And we said, let there be a strong government to control us in our darkness. Let there be armies to control our bodies so that we may learn how to kill one another neatly and efficiently in our darkness. And there was no evening and no morning on the sixth day before the end. And we said, let there be rockets and bombs to kill faster and easier. Let there be gas chambers and furnaces to be more thorough. And there was no evening and no morning on the fifth day before the end. And we said, let there be drugs and other forms of escape, for there is constant annoyance. Reality just disturbing our comfort. And there was no evening and no morning on the fourth day before the end. And we said, let there be combinations, so that we may come on any and there was no evening and no morning on the third day before the end. And finally, we said, let us create God in our image. Let some other God compete with us. Let us say that God think as we think, hate as we hate, kills as we kill. And there was no morning and no evening on the second day before the end. On the last day, there was a great noise on the face of the earth. Fire consumed a beautiful glow, and there was silence. The blackened earth now rested to worship the one true God. And God saw all that we had done. In the silence over the smoldering ruins, God went. Our second placer in the math side declamation is Aranmar B. Foxidio. In the end, we destroyed the heaven that was called Earth. The Earth had been beautiful until our spirits moved over it and destroyed all things. And we said, let there be a darkness, and there was darkness. And we liked darkness, so we called the darkness security. And we divided ourselves into races, religion, and classes of society. And there was no evening and no morning on the seventh day before the end. And we said, let there be a strong government to control us in our darkness. Let there be a armies to control our body so that we may learn to keep neatly and efficiently in our darkness. And there was no evening and no morning on the sixth day before the end. And we said, 
Let there be a rockets and bombs to kill faster and easier. Let there be a gas chambers and furnaces to be more thorough. And there was no evening and no morning on the fifth day before the end. And we said, let there be a drugs and other form of escape. For there is this constant annoyance, reality, which is disturbing us in our comfort. And there was no evening and no morning on the fourth day before the end. And we said, let there be a divisions in our nations, so that we may know who are who is our common enemy. And there was no evening and no morning on the second day before the end. And we said, let us create God in our image. Let other God compete with us. Let us say that God thinks as we think, hate as we hate, kill as we kill. In the last day, there was a great noise on the face of the earth. Fire consumed on the beautiful globe. And there was a silence. Reverse Creation by Bernard Bachman And the first placer is Janarian R. Season. Reverse creation. In the end, we destroyed the heaven that was called earth. The earth had been beautiful until our spirit moved over it and destroyed all things. And we said, let there be darkness. And there was darkness. And we liked the darkness. So I called the darkness security. And we divided ourselves into races and religions and classes of society. And there was no morning and no evening on the seventh day before the end. And we said, let there be a strong government to control us in our darkness. Let there be armies to control our bodies so that we may learn to kill one another neatly and efficiently in our darkness. And there was no evening and no morning on the sixth day before the end. And we said, let there be rockets and bombs to kill faster and easier. Let there be gas chambers and furnaces to be more thorough. And there was no evening and no morning morning on the fifth day before the end and we said let there be drugs and other forms of escape for there is this constant annoyance reality which is disturbing our comfort and there's no evening and no morning on the fifth day before the end and we said let there be drugs and other forms of escape for there is this constant annoyance reality which is disturbing our comfort and there's no evening and no morning on the fourth day before the end and we said, let there be divisions among the nations so that we may know who is our common enemy. And there was no evening and no morning on the third day before the end. And finally, we said, let us pray God in our image. Let the God complete to us. Let us say that God thinks as we think, hates as we think, and kills as we kill. And there was no morning and no evening on the second day before the end. On the last day, there's a great noise on the face of the earth. Fire consumed the beautiful globe, and there's silence. The block and the urn now rested to worship the one true God. And God saw all that we had done. And in the silence over the smoldering ruins, God wept. And now let's go to our third category, Matsai Recycle Costume. Saan spelling B? Ikuntis ko mga matanis, iki dati na pa. Okay. So, 
Um, okay, let me read uh, the content of this certificate first. So, Universal College, uh, Basic Education Schools, Preschool, Grade School. Okay, Certificate of Recognition is awarded to Strauss Jewel Carzola for actively particip participated the presentations for the making of recycled costume during the virtual math and science celebration with the theme Agham Pananaliksik at Teknolohiya Kabalikat sa Matatag at Maunlad na Pamayanan. Given this second day of October 2021 at Union Christian College, City of San Fernando, uh, signed Dr. Grace Hope P. Bautista, our school principal, and um, Ma'am Rowena W. Galanco, <coughs> our school coordinator. Next, Lakisha Marilla Della, Delia. Yuna Eloa R. Madrigal. Summer Gabriela Ogden. Princess Chris Shell C. Fajardo. Okay, so let's go to Matsai Recycled Costume, primary level. Okay, third placer in Best in Recycled Costume goes to Jadley R. Dakulan. Oh, mag-clap naman tayo mga bata. Second placer is Darren Carl S. Abuan. Palakpak naman tayo dyan. Salamat. And our Second place winner. Oh, no. Um, male category po yung isa. Now, second place winner, uh, female category, is Mega Nicole B. Lozano. Oh, clap naman dyan. Yan. Thank you, thank you. So, first place winner, male category, is Rio Luis Artin Ball. Oh, clap naman. Yes, thank you. And our first placer winner in Best in Recycled Costume female category goes to Seth Amber A. Pecadiso. Wow, ang ganda nga. Made of yan, newspapers. Yan. Okay, let's go naman po sa intermediate. Tignan natin kung sino yung mga nanalo sa mga ate natin at kuya. Okay, third place winner goes to Raven Jazz G. Gomez. Male category. Okay, clap naman dyan. Ah, Kuya Raven yan. Ayan. Next, sa female category naman, third placer is Noah May F. Uhas Castro. Okay, pakiklap naman, clap naman tayo dyan. Ayan. Next. Okay, second placer, male category, Ray Andes 
Phil S. Doctolero. Wow! Tignan nyo. Oh, ang ganda. Di ba? Okay. And second placer, female category, Jermaine Levy Ruaro. Very good. And now, our first placer, male, cate male category, is Justin B. Guerinalda. Ah, ang ganda. Next, our first placer is Romizel Kate P. Ordonia. Wow, ang ganda. Oh, palakpakan naman. Okay, so punta naman tayo sa ating Matsai Quiz B. Okay, so un unahin natin ang grade 1. Okay, sino kaya ang mga grade 1 na nanalo? Okay, sige. So third placer is Kervin Sai Kindipan. Okay, nandito ba si Kervin? Grade 1. Parang wala siya. Okay, clap naman tayo. Second placer is Adrian June P. Galangco. Okay. Next. Our first placer is Zaikari Kaiden B. Morla. Okay. Next, let's go to grade 2. Grade 2 class. Sino kaya ang mga nanalo sa grade 2? Tignan natin. Next po. Okay, third placer is Uriel Yancy B. Corpus. O, palakpaka naman natin. Ayan, very good. Next, second placer, Myrtle Green B. Lipadan. And our first placer is set number A Picadiso. Wow, congratulations, J2. All right. So, kita naman tayo sa mid-class ng grade three. Okay, tignan natin kung sino yung mga nanalo sa grade three. Ayan, so ang nakakuha po or ang nanalo sa third place ay si Eunice Agatha F. Perez. O, palakpakan naman natin si Agatha. Ayan. Okay. Good job po. Next po. And our second place winner is Zian Calix. V. Galvez. And our first placer is Darren Carl S. Abuan. Ayan. Congratulations, grade 3. So much more. Okay, let's go to Grade 4 naman. Let's have grade 4 naman. Okay. Next po. Okay. Third placer is Noah May F. Ojas Castro. Okay. Palakpakan natin. Go. Next. Second placer is Ayana Vien G. Vazai.
And our first placer is John Eliza F. Villanueva. Yay! Palakpakan naman, wala akong narinig. Okay, let's have grade 5. Sino yung mga nanalo sa grade 5? Tignan natin. Oh, hintayin natin. Okay, so ang third placer natin ay si Romizel K.T. Ordonia. Yan, palakpakan naman natin. Okay. Next, our second placer is Gabriel Brett J. Hippol. Okay, palakpak na ulit. Palakpakan natin ulit. Okay, and our first place winner in Quiz B is Sophia Julia P. Baradi. Okay, palakpak na to. Na tayo. Okay, so let's go to grade 6 naman. Huh? Okay, third placer, Kate Marjo Denise D. Pasqua. Next, second placer, Tristan Lay B. Arellano. Congratulations. And our first placer is Aidan Viel G. Vasai. Yay! Congratulations po sa mga nanalo. Aidan Yes. Okay. So, punta muna tayo sa Poster making. Poster making naman po tayo. Okay, Ma'am Joy. May sasabihin ka pa muna, Ma'am Joy. Hi. Yes, Ma'am. Okay, sige po, Ma'am Joy. Lang po. Yan. Haggardness na. <laughs> okay lang, ma'am. Still beautiful, beautiful naman. Okay. Uh, we would like to thank our judges for the recycled costume. These are the following judges. Ma'am Liesel Kabading. Ma'am Mercelita Esperon, Ma'am Manilin Cacho, Ma'am Cheryl Ignacio. For the poster, we have Ma'am Rufina Dumawang, Ma'am Sharon Tawi, Sir Jess Coronel. And for the declamation, we have Ma'am Melicia Tabian. Okay. 
makinig. Gusto niyo ulit mapanood yung mga uh, drawing ng mga nanalo? Apo! Apo! Okay, sige. Tanungin natin si Ma'am Franz. Posible ba, Ma'am Franz, <laughs> na makita ulit? Yan, pwede. Let's yes, watch. Po. The okay. different poster making outputs of the following contestants.
Ayan, nakilala nyo ba yung mga drawings or yung mga posters? Apo! Apo. Okay. Okay, Ma'am Joanne, ready na ba? Ang ating... Hello, Ma'am Joy? Yes po. Um, I think si Ma'am Malu po ang mag-flash ng winners sa poster making. Ah, okay po. Thank you po. Okay. Ma'am, hindi po ako. Naisend ko na po kay Ma'am Franz. Sige, <laughs> na mo ka na. Ah, okay po. Oh. Sorry po. <laughs> Ayan, andito na. Second place na. Okay, so let's have the winners of Poster making in primary level. So our second placer is set Amber A. Pecadiso. Okay. Nakita nyo kanina yung uh, work ni set Amber Pecadiso. Okay. And our first placer is... Darren Carl S. Abuan. Okay, palakpakan naman po natin. Wow. Wow, ang galing nila. Takot award si Oo nga eh. <laughs> And then, the, yung ating third placer ay mula sa uh, grade 1, si Adrian June P. Galangco. Okay, good job Adrian. Okay, sorry po kasi hindi magkakasunod yung na-flash. Okay, puntahan naman po natin ang mga nanalo sa intermediate intermediate level. Okay, next po mga friends. So, ang nakakuha po ng third place ay si Kariba Simon B. De Villa. I'm sorry, Cariba Simon de Villa. And second place, si Aaron Mar Poxillo. And the first placer is Dalin Vicena. Okay, palakpakan naman natin sila, yung mga ate natin at kuya. Yay! 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 Ayan! Okay, congratulations po sa lahat. Thank you po sa ating mga participants. Ayan, Ma'am Joy. May sasabihin ka po. Okay, congratulations to all winners. And congratulations pa rin sa mga hindi nanalo. Okay? Yes. Panahon, panapanahon lang yan. Nagkataon lang na hindi kayo napili. Pero 
Hindi big sabihin noon na hindi niyo dapat i pagpatuloy yung pag-develop ng mga talent niyo. Okay? So continue to continue to develop your talent. And do not be discouraged. Okay, mga bata? Si Ma'am Grace, baka may gustong sabihin. Ay, oo nga pala po. Nag-post na ako dun sa chat. Nag-post na dun sa chat. Okay, congratulations once again. May mga announcement po ba kayo, mga ma'am? Okay, we want to recognize our judges. Um, giving the following certificates of appreciation to Dr. Manelin Aikacho. Namiss ko yung isa. <laughs> Dr. Cheryl. Si Dr. Cheryl. Gina. Okay, Dr. Cheryl G. Ignacio. Ma'am Lisel C. Cabading. Ma'am Mer Mercilita M. Esperon. Ma'am Melisha Tabian. Ma'am Rufina M. Dumawang. Ma'am Sharon P. Tawid. Sir Jesse Carbonell. Carbonell, Coronel. 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 Sorry po. Carbonell. Pesta na po. Naantok na po. Okay lang po. Kaya-edit, kaya-edit. Wala. <laughs> anyway, but thank you po. Thank you din. Thank you sa mga uh, parents and to all of the pupils participated in the event. Thank you din sa mga teachers and sa aming principal for having this event uh, done successfully. Thank you to all of you. Thank you din po kay Sir Chofilo, Domoko. And now, to end our session, let's have our attendance selfie. Nag-enjoy po ba kayo? Congratulations sa mga nanalo. Okay, let's have our attendance selfie. Tingin na po sa camera. And one, two, six, five. Page two. One, two, three, five. Very good. We're done. Bye. Okay, po. Pwede na tayong mag-appear at mag-disappear. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations, teachers. Thank you, teacher. Happy teacher's day. Thank you.